Hello, and welcome back to the definitive Starship Review series without access to a proper table, where today we are covering the uh, Discovery D7, which I will almost certainly refer to the K7 more than once as I just finished that review. A week ago, of course. I just keep wearing this sweatshirt for several weeks in a row. Discovery sort of take on the early version, the Mark I of the famous D7. And yeah, they certainly at least 25% different, but we'll see if those differences are good. Before I get into any review though, I do have to say that I am part of the Eagle Mouse Affiliate Program, which means that if you choose to purchase this model because of the video, there's a link in the description. That is an affiliate link, meaning I will get a 7% commission on the sale of this model. I'm allowed to say whatever the heck I want about the models, and I still purchase them with my own money, but just be aware there's a monetary incentive for me to tell you to go buy these models. Anyway, as is tradition, we are going to get into our size comparisons, uh, but this is a pretty standard Discovery size model. I think a bit on the bigger size side in terms of length, but it is firmly within that Discovery range. As demonstrated by the Vulcan Cruiser, the only other Discovery model I have got out, if we just line them up, you can see that the D7 is just a little bit bigger, uh, much wider, of course, at the wings, but not so much as the head as many Klingon ships go. And so the sort of D7 Katinga structure uh, they tend to get pretty long, a bit a bit long rather, in Eagle Moss. Over in the original collection, it is about the same size as the XL Bideridax, which is a lovely model, and these two look wonderful together. And then compared to the Enterprises, uh, the XL Take Your Pick Disco Prize, TOS Enterprise, or TMP Enterprise, I, you know, this is how it compares to that pretty standard range. And you know what? Here it is. I didn't have the D7 when I did the old uh, Bird of Prey review, but the sort of complete 25% different set uh, for that I hope Strange New Worlds will be taking advantage of. I'm a bit too early to tell. But yes, they, they do look lovely together, the old Enterprise D7 and Bird of Prey. But we're not here. I, I had to, in the middle of this recording, crawl under the house to get that out of storage. So aren't you lucky? I hope you enjoyed that. But anyway, let us get back into our closer looks at the D7. As I said before, a very standard D7 style framework from all angles. Very recognizable silhouette. The most Klingon silhouette, probably. Um, the biggest difference is probably these nacelles which are much bulkier. I don't actually own the uh, D7 model, which has been sold out for essentially all of time. But these models, and actually go to go to this engine, are much bulkier, much bigger, which I kind of like as an idea. Um, I don't prefer it as a silhouette, but I like the idea of, you know, this sort of the Mark I. Um, if you really want to know what I think about the Klingon designs, I've got this video here, actually explaining kind of how I think they make sense, how they work, but it's kind of the Klingons transitioning from their old ancient designs to sort of this presumably newer engine style, and so it's bulkier, and it gets refined, of course, whenever the D7 gets retrofitted down to the classic gray version we know and love. But uh, why don't we just keep reviewing, start up at the nacelles, get some close-ups. As you can see, very greebly heavy, um, got a green glow as opposed to the Federation blue or red. To complement the whole model, very thin uh, with green in the back, and the inside I believe is just symmetrical. Yeah, that looks the same. You will notice though here that this model actually has a mistake I did not notice until this video, where there's just some random green paint. Um, not on any of the other parts in the nacelles, and I tried to figure out if every model has that or if it's just mine, and nearly every picture on the internet is like this, um, hiding this nacelle, which you could say is because everyone has a mistake, but also all the Eagle Moss models are displayed like that. That's part of why my thumbnails do them like this. But yeah, I suspect that's just a problem with the hand painting, because it's always weird. Eagle Moss says these models are hand painted, which is like obviously true, because as a company, you're not going to have made um, Doctor Who figures for as long as you have as an English-based company while making a false claim like that and not having been caught. But it always makes you wonder how, because every little painting mistake 
from like even the misaligned windows are exactly misaligned on every model even when they remake them it does make you wonder where exactly is the hand painting coming in? Apparently it's right there on this model. Of course the fix is to just display this side, but yes it is unfortunate. You could probably get a new model um, requested from Eagle Moss. They're usually really good about that sort of stuff. I had models um, from when I was away from like two or three months late. I'm like hey these are wrong, can I get new ships? And they just sent them to me. Anyways, moving on from the nacelles, you've got the lovely uh, weird angle, I guess, connecting to what we're going to call the wings, which is a very engraved, almost bird-like pattern, which is generally more of a Romulan feel, but of course the Klingons uh, have the bird of prey from a little after this era. It is perhaps a little early for bird-like, but it's also not totally bird-like. Of course, let's see, in this era, I don't think there was quite a Discover um, a Romulan Klingon alliance, but it also kind of, I guess, reflects the more ornate nature of the ships that they had been using uh, just before this was built. I will go back to the structs and highlight this beautiful little, uh, almost golf ball? Yeah, golf ball dimple feel on the nacelles, which is quite nice. Let's Let's see. Yes, is also on the underside. As you can see, all the etches have this lovely green shade, but are also etched in a slightly lighter green, or actually a much lighter green, which I think is used to great effect on the whole model. I'm actually really quite a fan of this redesign. When I saw it in the show, of course, I'm like, man, I hate these nacelles. Of course, the not the only thing different. Actually, I, I, I did quite like the etching. But, um, of course, having the model on me and seeing it a lot longer, it has grown on me quite a bit. This little bit up top, you've got that same, I think it might be the same light green, but just much more intense um, in a little grate. And, of course, the little almost car engine-like, where you've got the divots, uh, just some randomly greeblies. And look at that, the good old Klingon logo on the back with what I imagine must be a docking port, some impulse engines. Just greeblies all along the side. It actually reminds me a fair bit of Discovery from the back um, in a sort of not quite, but I kind of get it. The underside is largely the same as the front at uh, the top. In fact, uh, the etching is different. Yeah, but it's pretty similar. Still looks good. I love the um, Klingon logo on the bottom. Just add that bit of red, that color, that something that's not green. I believe the other things, like the Katinga have it. I might see if I can look that up, because I think my model's packed away. Just make me unbox everything, won't you? Yes, the XL Katinga, this is, does have that same shape on the underside, and actually is engraved, and is rather bird-like. So no, I will give them that. Let's actually take a look while I have this. Oh yeah, that's very similar engraving. Um, I definitely, definitely see where they're getting the patterns. And yeah, even on the underside, if you look, it's very similar patterns. Not so much on the necks, looking at them, but hey, these ships are decades apart with one in the middle. So, uh, yeah, if you just want a quick size comparison there. God, this is a beautiful model I haven't seen in a while. And just an engine comparison real quick. Moving on, you can see just kind of a pretty basic, um, almost arrowhead look, I guess, sketch on the... Uh, biggest part of the neck with a little more bracing on the bottom. Um, the front, just a lot of kind of detailing windows, I suppose. Potentially launchers. Well, actually, no. Torpedo launchers on the front, of course. But yeah, it's a nice little look. Almost provides like a deck-based... No, you know what it is? It's like if you took a sailing ship or even the Enterprise or whatever and cut it in half like this way and you took a cross-section of all the rooms, which I love that look. I imagine that's not what it is, but it's it really is a wonderful look. I do I really like that actually. Can you want more like a kind of like the K7 actually with the um concentric slightly detailed uh cylinders. There's the word I keep forgetting. And this is actually layered. Uh if you look at it, it feels really nice if you rub your hand down it. Yeah, it's a layered detail, kind of like plate armor. I suppose you'd call it. I'm sure there's a term I don't know for this. Uh, just leading then into the head with a sort of teardroppy uh, etched shape. The famous torpedo launcher, which appears to be just black down there. I don't know if I can get the camera in it, but it's that perfect kind of shadowed, looks like it goes down forever almost. Uh, unless you shine a professional lighting kit directly down the middle. And there you go. You can see what I imagine are windows lining the sort of command bridge. I really do love just this pretty pretty standard 
little Katinga K7 look with, of course, more of that dark green highlight and then kind of a city bit almost at the top, similar to all the designs with the bump and then the chimney, I guess you'd call it. If we go over to the Katinga again, you'll see a very similar bump, a bit more simplistic, refined on this one. But that's the advancement of technology for you, isn't it? And yeah, you can just tell it's a Katinga D7 style ship done in the Discovery Strange New Worlds now style. And yeah, I, I mean, for Strange New Worlds, you know, I don't think they'd have to change anything about this unless they started crossing over with the original series timeline or really brushing up against it. And obviously they're not going to crush over because then you can't have Pike. But I don't think you'd have to change anything for this. I suppose you could slowly bring the nacelles closer to what the D7 is going to look like. But um, I think it's a lovely little version of the famous D7. is sort of a, a Mark I almost before uh, whatever material everyone starts using that's super simplistic gets discovered in widespread. And yeah, I think that's going to be it for this model. I think we've covered a lot of it. I definitely recommend it. If you think you like it, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Just um, maybe check if, if you've been watching other reviews, or if you know, if you own this, and if you have that same mistake on the nacelle or don't, uh, let us know in the comments. That would be lovely. But anything like that, Eagle Moss, you know, the, the delay is a bit annoying, but usually they'll send you a new one and not even have you return the original. So hey, you could gain a little fleet of these, which would be nice. I've caught a few accidental fleets like that that I I often end up trading them for ships I don't have that are out of stock. But um, yeah, it's a lovely little D7 design. And so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any more questions about this model, just ask in the dis comments. I'll do my best to answer them. If you want me to review a specific model, just ask. I'm more likely to own it in in than not, and I own the entire Discovery collection, so I'll get to it as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.